two tonight. I don't know about you, I'm glad to be in church. Like I got everything, I'll turn this thing on. I'll get this watch. My watch stopped. So it's going to be, huh, 6.30 for the rest of the night. So y'all just hang in. So I'll let you out about 6.30 tonight. You may let it work out. Psalm chapter 22. Uh, we began last week. You've actually got what's called a trilogy here. You've got three psalms that go together. A lot of times they, they pair together. That's like the songs of degrees. Uh, we got into that in Psalms 120 through 134 are all grouped together, and they're called Songs of Degrees. So you've got a trilogy here. You've got chapter number 22, we find Christ on the cross. You get chapter 23, you find the care of the shepherd. And chapter 24, one day, thank God, the coming of the king. So... You got these three together. Last week we dealt with the first 21 verses and we dealt with the cross of Christ. Almighty Jehovah God. Once you think about that, hung on a cross. Creator of this world and this universe. Owner of everything that is. Now, hey, the Bible said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. I want to tell you, if you're here tonight, saved or lost, you're his friend. Died for you. You know, he called Judas friend in the garden. He said, Friend, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Somebody asked me one time, how could he be a friend of Judas? I said, he was a friend of Judas. Just Judas was not a friend of his. But he was certainly a friend of Judas Iscariot. And I thank God for that. So we've, we found out last week he became sin for us who knew no sin. That's amazing. <laughs> Perfect son of God. He didn't just take your sin. The Bible said he became sin literally transformed into sin itself on that cross of Calvary when he died. He that hated sin loved sinners so much that it became sin. He came to sin. Boy, I, th I think that statement, he became sin for us, is so much greater than his creation acts. See, when he made the universe, he made it in holiness, in perfection. He did it as a sovereign, perfect God made everything. And boy, it was a wondrous thing what he did. I believe this act was even greater than that because he took sin upon him. I think he became sins greater than every miracle he ever performed. On about man stilled storms, raised the dead, cleansed lepers, made the lame to walk, the dumb talk, the deaf to hear. I'm talking about that God that said, Ephrathah, be opened, and just opened the mouth uh, of, of a, uh, a tongue that could not speak. I'm talking about God tonight. The work of the cross, when we get down to where we're going to begin tonight in verse number 22, verse number 21, the cross is finished. I want to say hallelujah. I'm glad. The body of our Lord Jesus has now been placed in a garden tomb after verse number 21. They put him in that garden tomb where no man ever laid. It was one that belonged to a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. They placed that body in that tomb. I'm talking about a little gap right here between two verses. You say, how do you get all that in there? Listen. Sometimes in the Bible you find gaps of thousands of years between verses. We find after his death, they took him down off of that cross. They took him and they put him in a garden tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. The Jews went to Pilate and told Pilate, he said that he had rise again. You need to put a guard. And then Pilate told them, you go make it as sure as you can. Amen. So you've got now Jews that are actually standing around the opening of that tomb. I'm not talking about off in the distance watching from behind trees. They put guards 
to make sure that nobody came and opened that tomb. We find the disciples of the Lord stayed away during that period of time. I, I think about the disappointment of their hearts. You know, when he said, I go away, uh, boy, how disappointed they were. I believe when he died, even though they knew the scriptures, I believe that it was a time where their hearts just fell. They all gathered together. That's what people do when, they, when they're afraid and they gather together and they all gather together. The disciples didn't come around and the silence of death was deafening. You know, a lot of people are afraid to walk through cemeteries. Nothing out there is going to hurt you. But the silence is deafening. And then we find on the third day, very early in the morning, the ladies came to the garden tomb, and that stone was rolled back. They entered and found the angels of the Lord sitting in he asked whom they sought, and they sought the Lord, and he just simply said, He is not here. He's arisen, as he said. So you find in between these two, when you get to verse number 22, we find the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I want to read these verses. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob glorify him, and fear him all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat, beat, uh, shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. I want you to notice a change in verse 28. We'll deal with that. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. I, I count it a privilege tonight to serve the Lord. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born. That's our responsibility that he hath done this. I want to look at that resurrection just for a few moments tonight. You know, the resurrection has been called the capstone of Christianity. The capstone. What's capstone? Well, I've got a lot of cap blocks. Anybody know what a cap block is? You've got eight and six and eight and ten inch uh, concrete blocks that are hollow and you put up walls, but then you get what's called a cap block. Cap block is some three, three and a half inches thick. It's the same size dimension wise as the blocks. And what it does, it sets there and covers up all the holes. It keeps water from getting into whatever you're building. It's simply a, a capstone or a cap block. The resurrection is the cornerstone of or the capstone of Christianity. The reason I say that, we go over to Romans Road. How many kind of know Romans Road? All right, we use that all the time. Get to Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 9. The Bible said that, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Now, I want to stop there just for a moment. He didn't say and shall believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for sin. That's not the capstone. I thank God for the importance that our sin tonight is covered. It's more than covered. You ask me why I'm happy. Our sin is actually gone. He said it would cast him as far as the east is from the west. He cast it behind his back into the sea of forgetfulness. 
Uh, God said he'd never be remembered anymore. When you get to Revelation chapter number 20, we find the sin of the wicked is going to be enumerated. The books are opened and everything they've ever said, done, thought, or wanted to do. God has that written in a book and there will be a full payment for every bit of that. But ours are gone. When you go back to Romans 10, 9 again, and believe that God hath raised him from the dead. That is the capstone. If Christ had not risen from the dead, listen, his death would have been in vain. But that grave couldn't hold him. So we use that terminology. Over in Romans chapter 9 10, it talks that there's a glory of life anew in the resurrection. I love spring of the year. Now I look forward to fall. Fall, everything's dying. Winter, everything is dead. You get into spring and you see the first buds of life beginning to come out. Boy, isn't it a glorious time? The grass greens up everything. Boy, you get just a little bit of green on the trees and next week you've got the leaves just about in uh, full bloom. Everything's coming out. I love the spring of the year. I don't have allergy problems. I hide Miss Barber in the spring of the year. But at the same time, I, hey, I thank God for that because there's life. So after the dying and the death... You have the resurrection back to life again. That's what he's talking about in these verses. We find here that a tree will give way eventually to a throne. They hung him on a tree, friend. He's going to sit on the throne. God the Father tonight sits on the throne in heaven. One day our Lord's going to sit on the throne. He'll come through the eastern gate. If anybody is familiar with Jerusalem, the eastern gate going through that wall has been blocked up for centuries. They have an Arab cemetery in front of that gate. Nobody has come in and out since he came in and out. And he'll be the next one that's the gate that he'll enter in through. But we find that a tree gives way to the throne and a cross gives way to a crown. This past prophet, and that's what he was. You know, he actually has a threefold definition. He's prophet, priest, and king. But his prophecy stopped. His prophecy was fulfilled. But now we find that he becomes a priest. We find the obligation of the resurrection. Verses 22 through 26, they deal with the things of the priesthood of the ministry. I thank God tonight that we have such an high priest. And he's in heaven tonight. One thing that he did before they ever laid a hand on him was he ascended to heaven. There were actually two ascensions. Our people basically understand that. When Mary saw him in the garden, he said, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended unto my God and your God. He was a purified priest, but later he said, Put your hands on me. Hey, thrust your hands and your fingers. And they held him by the, his feet. Our high priest took that blood at, at the resurrection. He took that blood that was shed. I've heard uh, some great preacher, so to speak, I read his commentary on the book of Hebrews and he said if it took one dark drop of blood to save a Christian, he said the blood would have run out a long time ago. And I thought to myself, you're ignorant of the word of God. It didn't take one drop of blood to buy your redemption. It took every drop of blood to buy, pay for your redemption. He took that blood, he entered in, you go to the book of Hebrews, Hey, with the blood of Christ, an eternal offering, and that blood tonight as we sit here is on the mercy seat in heaven, and it'll be there forever. That's our standing with God. So we find in verses 20 through, three, uh, through 26 his priesthood, but verses 27 on down to the end of the chapter, we actually see the change vocalized in verse 28. But he said in verse 27, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. He's talking about the millennial reign of Christ. 
So in that resurrection to life, we find that he's got a resurrection unto a priesthood. That's where he is today. And then kingship, when it comes to the uh, him coming back in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation. So we find a priest and we find a prince. I thought about our glorious resurrection. Over in John chapter 14, because he lives, listen to what John 14 said, Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. His resurrection is our guarantee of eternal life. I thank God one day we will forever be with the Lord. Amen. I like 1 Thessalonians 4.18, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You end the 23rd Psalm, which we will deal with later, and David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord for a real long time, didn't he? He said forever. I like what the old preacher said one time. He was preaching or quoting actually the Lord's Prayer, and when he got down to the end, and he said it said forever, and he said forever, and ever, and ever, and he just kept going on. Anybody ever heard Dr. S.M. Lockridge? I've got that. You ought to hear seven minutes. That old man preached seven minutes. And I played it through this one time to our congregation. I said, you need to hear that old preacher preach. And he preached the Word of God, but he preached on Jesus Christ. And I thank the Lord for that. So we find we'll live with Him. Over in Romans 6, 9, He said this, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Hey, one of these days we're going to die here. But then death has no more dominion on us. The last enemy that's going to be conquered is going to be death. And He conquered that in His resurrection. But he went on and said this, Death hath no more dominion over him. Over in Philippians 3, Paul said this, That I may know him. Paul wanted to, he spent his life getting to know the Lord. I believe you get saved and you spend the rest of your life getting to know him. Same way with marriage. A young couple gets married, they're in love, and they've got that young person love, and they can't, they can't stay away from each other. You know, they go out, and then they go home, and they call each other, and now they text each other, and they FaceTime each other, and they, 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 they want to spend all their time together. But they get married. I've often said that you never wake up the day after your wedding with the woman that you went to the altar with that night. Same way with a man. Now you're with them 24-7. I used to go pick Barbara up every hair in place. You remember the beehives? Hmm? She had, her hair was as black as a raven's hair. And I mean just coal black. She was blonde when she was born. Her hair turned red. It turned auburn. It turned black. It turned white. It's turned five different times. Mine is just simply turned white and turning loose. But you spend your time getting to know. That's, that's what this is, Paul, Paul said. That I may know him. And he said, and the power of his resurrection. That's why Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He said, it's far better. My heart doesn't go out to people that are die, died because they don't have to die again. Just got to do that thing once. We had a couple of unfortunate people in the Bible. Lazarus uh, was one of them uh, that he had to die twice. We find sometimes that they had to die twice, and some of them did that. But I thank God that death holds no dominion over us. But the resurrection is our guarantee. He talked about before that the fellowship of his sufferings. Listen, we're going to pay a price for our Christianity. But he said being made conformable unto his death. So they're talking about facing death in this life. Just facing death as it is. I, I preached on it ignorance with death the other day and I've said if I knew I was going to die right here I probably wouldn't go there but I used the word probably wouldn't. Because sometimes death is the far better option. Sometimes I was talking to another man today. He said, I'd put my chair there and sit down. I don't know. I know I'm going to die there, but I don't know when, but I'm going to make sure I'm here on time. 
Amen. I said, you don't have to worry about being on time. And by the way, if you get ready to die, you'll be the first one to know it. But this is what he said in verse 11, And if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So I thought just a few minutes about what Christ did. He said that we're going to be resurrected just like his glorious body was resurrected. So our resurrection is going to be the same as his. We'll come out of that grave. Hey, thank God. The moment you close your eyes here, you're going to be there. There's not going to be any time release. Uh, my sister was talking about Dan. His, his little girl died in 1985, died of cancer on her 16th birthday. They buried a little girl, took little Sherry there, but my little sister the other night said she was dreaming and she saw my brother fall to the floor and saw Sherry help him back up. And she said that dream, she said, I'm going to hang on to that just a little bit. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I want to let you know it's going to happen. So I thought about our resurrection. It's a resurrection unto life. One of the best portions of Scripture is John chapter number 5. And just five verses, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. Have you believed on him that sent it? Have you believed on Christ? Hey, make salvation simple. It's turning from dead works. That's repentance from dead works and faith in something that he finished. This is what he said. He that believeth on him that sent me hath. That's present tense, everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. They shall come forth, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. That good is not good works. That good is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. No works will get you to heaven. They that have done evil, that's rejection of Jesus Christ, unto the resurrection of damnation. I thank God tonight that I will live eternally and that eternity will be with Him. I'm looking forward to going home. We're going to have to make another trip to Kentucky. This is going to be more or less a flying trip. That means we're going to go, we're going to go in, take care of business, see all of our family members. We're hitting the road and coming back this way. But I thank, I thank God for the resurrection and then living with Jesus Christ. He said, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Do you want to live forever with him? That's what resurrection's all about. And then the second thing, it's a resurrection of hope. I was driving a man down the road one day and he said, you Baptists think we're, you're eternally saved and then you say you hope you're saved. I said, oh no, no, you guys, that's, I don't hope I'm saved. Salvation is my blessed hope. I know I'm saved. I, that's my hope. That's where we're going. Over in John chapter number 11, talking to Martha. Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And did you know that if he had been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died? Nobody ever died in the presence of Jesus Christ in his ministry. No man ever died with him there. He had to be away. So he made himself away. But this is what she said, but I know now that even now, I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am. There are those words, the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
Believest thou this? And she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. A blessed hope in this life of a glorious hope that is approaching very quickly for some of us. If you're talking about old age, uh, my brother was 79 years of age when he died. God, God promised three score and ten or four score by reason of strength. You say, preacher, you're taking that kind of easy. I'm not. I miss my brother. But I thank, I thank God for something. My brother said he was saved. I've talked to my brother, and I'm going to take him at his word, and I'm looking forward to seeing him one day again. I talked to his daughter just before she died. Drove all the way to Kentucky to witness to her to make sure when I found out that Sherry, they, they had stopped everything, it was over with for her. She had a, uh, a sarcoma, a bone cancer. Uh, when the doctor first saw that, he said, I give her no hope. That was the first thing he said before they ran any other test. He said, I give her no hope. He knew what it was. I drove, and I'll never forget, I went and sat in a swing with my brother out where he lived in the country, and he said, would you like a glass of tea? I said, I sure would. I wouldn't ever talk to Danny. He went into the house, and Sherry came out on crutches. They had taken her leg off at the hip, and she came out, had her little scarf on. Her hair was all gone. I'll never forget, she came out and she sat down with me and I said, Sherry, I want to ask you a question. I said, sweetheart, are you going to heaven? She died. She said, Uncle David, she said, I'm saved. And I know I'm saved. And I thank God for that. And the next thing she said, do you want me to want to see me climb a tree? <laughs> I said, I'd love to watch you climb, climb a tree. And she put that crutch down with one leg. She skinned up that tree just like a monkey. <laughs> she climbed a tree for me out there. I thank God that we've got a hope tonight of another life, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And then the third thing about our resurrection, it's going to be like unto His. It's going to be a resurrection of holiness. It will be a holy resurrection. Been, hey, all the sins going to be left behind. That's why this body's got to die. You say, why do people have to die? Because this body is sinful and it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We're going to have to uh, get changed. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is your resurrection chapter. And he talked about we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Somebody put that verse uh, in a nursery at the church. <laughs> We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And they put it on the wall. And, uh, and I thank God for that. I'm talking about holiness. I've, I've never known holiness. And God saved me. God saved a sinner. God converted me. I was still a sinner saved by the grace of God. Never, never known a day when I didn't sin. But one day, thank God, when I opened my eyes up in heaven... Sin will have no dominion over me again. I'm talking about in the body. God gives me a perfect body in that day. It's a resurrection of holiness. Matter of fact, he said in Romans chapter 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. No sin, shame, sorrow, sadness, a lot of things are going to be gone, folks. Heaven is going to be the best place that you ever saw. Over in Romans 6, 5, he said this, For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And then the fourth thing, our resurrection is one of immortality. I'm a moral man. Been dying for a long time. I believe at the moment of conception, your life clock begins to tick. We believe that a child is a child at conception. At that very moment when that seed of the man and seed of the woman come together, a child is there. God said, I knew you before you were ever conceived in secret. He, he was talking about, listen, God knew us before we were ever conceived. God already knew us. God knew everything about us. We find DNA in the Bible. He said that their members were written in a book and then they were fashioned in continuance as that child grew. 
God already knew how many hairs you'd have on your head, what the color your eyes would be. God knew everything about you. That DNA is already found in the Bible because God's the one that created DNA. But I thought about that. It's, a, it's immortality. Listen to what he said in 1 Corinthians. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. I've heard some say that that's one four hundredth of a second. Heard others say it's only one two hundredth of a second. Have you ever seen somebody's eye twinkle? It's gone. I've seen their eye actually, seen that twinkle, that little light, that little spark in their eye and watched it. This is what he said. He said, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We'll, we'll, we won't stink anymore. We won't get dirty anymore. He said, we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immorality, uh, immortality, and the only way it's going to do that is through death. And then resurrection. He said, then shall be brought to pass saying that his written death is swallowed up in victory. A new life, eternal life, a new body. Listen, wet time shall be no more for you and I. I've got a watch sitting here, and I know what time it is. It's 6.30. You say, how do you get that? Take the battery out of that thing. Hey, did you know we've got a clock on our mantle, and it's 7 o'clock? This is 7 o'clock straight up and down right now. So you're not late getting out. We've got a clock on our mantle that is 7 o'clock straight up and down. It's right two times a day, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. You say, why'd you take it out? Hey, because I never could get it slowed down or speed it up right. It's, got, yeah, it's one of these old clocks. And, and you've got, you can turn the speed up, make it faster, turn it down. I tried to set it. It didn't matter. Within a day or two, it was 10 minutes off. So I set it 7 o'clock, took the batteries out of it. I thank God in heaven we're not going to need that. We have no time. And then last, it's a res resurrection of blessing. Revelation chapter 20 I use this quite a bit. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That's our resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection of the just. Then a thousand and seven years later, a resurrection of the unjust. But we're in the first resurrection. That's when he comes as a thief in the night. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with, with a shout and with a uh, voice of the archangel, the trump of God. And listen, we're going to get out of here and go. But he said this, On such the second death hath no power. There's no saying if you're born once, you're going to die twice. If you're born twice, you'll only die once. But that second death is not an unconsciousness. That second death is called the lake of fire. And the Bible said it is the second death. It's beyond our comprehension tonight, but I thank God it's not beyond our belief. I believe what God said. I thank the Lord. He rose from that grave in these, the last verses over here. We find the person of salvation, the pleasure of salvation. We find a hundred different things in those verses. But I thank God he didn't stay in that grave. Three days and three nights. He said as Jonas was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. He said the Son of Man will be in the bowels of the earth three days and three nights. Amen. I thank God that he rose again. I praise the Lord for that. So we find him on the cross. But the cross could only be finished with the resurrection unto eternal life. That was the capstone that he laid in this particular chapter. And I thank the Lord for it. Listen, if you're not saved tonight, you're going to be resurrected. But that's going to be a resurrection under damnation. You don't want to be there. I promise you. And it's already been paid for because Christ loves you. Amen. Let's stand tonight and we're going to have an invitation. I thank God He loves us tonight. He said, Because I live, ye shall live also. One of these days I'll live forever with Him and I am excited about that prospect. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. If you need to come, you come.